Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Bing. I'm a photo and video creator. So in today's video, let's talk about the Filmic Pro, a popular app that allows you to get much better videos from your smartphone camera. This app is not free. Actually, it's quite expensive compared to the other apps. The app itself cost me 30 euros and I also purchased the cinematographer kit in the app, which gives you more color controls and log. So does it worth the money? Let's find out. Wait, before I get started, I just want you to know if you are subscribed, don't forget to turn on the little bell icon or you won't get any notifications when the new video is came out. So uh, who this app is made for? This app is made for people who want to get a much higher quality film looking videos from their smartphones. Smartphones are getting more and more powerful nowadays. Not only the computing power, but also the camera system. To photos, we got HDR, portrait mode, night mode, much higher pixel density. To videos, the 4K 60 frames per second are becoming a new standard, as well as the Full HD 240 frame slow motion. But the built-in camera app did too much work to the image for both photos and videos. The image is over sharpened, over saturated, over compressed, and also over denoised. This makes the image, uh, I'd say, not organic. It might catch eyes, but it's definitely not a pleasure to look at for most filmmakers. With the Filmac Pro, you can bypass all this. You can also get a higher bitrate, the full sensor image without cropping in, and more if you purchase the cinematographer kit. Not everyone with a smartphone can use this app. This app works perfectly with most iPhones, but for Android phones, things get complicated. There are thousands and hundreds of phones are using Android operating system and all kinds of hardware. So it's not possible for Filmac Pro teams to develop their app to match all of these phones. That's why you have to check out the support list before you buy it. Even your phone is supported, it doesn't mean that you can use it without a problem. You should check out this article from their website. It is basically requiring a powerful hardware or computing performance. For example, I'm using a Xiaomi Mi 9. Uh, it has a Snapdragon 8045, which is the flagship CPU from 2019. It can handle most games and apps, but came to the Filmic Pro. Sometimes it works perfectly, but sometimes it gives me a lot of frame dropping when I shooting uh, 4K 60 frames per second with the highest bitrate. Now let's get into the app. I suggest you to read the user menu once you purchase the app. It's been very useful for me. It is very well explained everything about this app. In the middle of the frame, we've got a circle, which is exposure. The square is the focus. Move them to lock the exposure and focus at one point. Double tap them to start auto exposure or auto focus. Down below, here is the imaging panel, color temperature, tone include logs, and color behavior. And here are the menu control wheels. It's here to change the shutter speed and the ISO. This icon with an A on it, it's live analytics. Tap it, then you will get zebra strips, clipping, false color, and focus picking. And here is the time code and some information include frame rate, resolution, battery, and storage space. Tap it to swap to histogram and waveform monitor. In the setting, you can change resolution, frame rate, 
You can also see a preset, change cameras, and so on. There are still a lot of details. I'm not going to cover them all. Again, check out the user menu. Overall, I don't like the user menu, neither the interaction logic of this app. It takes too much time to change the settings. And changing the ISO and shutter speed is so weird. You tap one, then it's changing another one. Yeah, I know it's called ISO lock or ISO priority, but I'm really not a fan of this. Why don't you just make the same as other cameras? For a pro-level video recording app, I wish we can have all the important information on the screen prominently, like frame rate, ISO, shutter speed, white balance, but in this app, we have only resolution, frame rate, and white balance displayed in some small areas at the corner. Okay, enough of unpleasant UI talking. Let's take a look at the image quality. First of all, with the Filmic Pro, I can bypass the crop factor brought by the built-in camera app due to the digital stabilization. That's a big advantage. And here is the direct comparison between the built-in camera app and the Filmic Pro with the highest bitrate, which is the Filmic Extreme. As you can see with the built-in app, the image looks sharp and saturated. But like we said before, it's just too much. When you zoom in, you can see the built-in app smudged the details all over wrong, and the Filmic Pro maintains the good details. The Filmic Pro has four level bitrate settings Economy, Standard, Filmic Quality, and Filmic Extreme. The Filmic Extreme is the highest quality setting. It allows you to record 4K, 3K, 2K, up to 100 megabit per second, and 1080p up to 50 megabit per second. If you use HEVC codec, the bitrate remains the same, but it will contain more data, which means a higher image quality than H.264. Through the side-by-side -side test, I didn't see much different from my naked eyes. Maybe it will affect a lot in the post-production, like color grading. Come to the file size, the difference is huge. Okay, finally, let's talk about the lock. It gives you three options besides the natural color profile. Dynamic, flat, and lock version 2. In the user menu, they said the natural gamma curve is based on the phone's default color mapping. I don't know much about this, such as logs, color profile, gamma curves. What I know is the log version 2 is supposed to have the best dynamic range, but in my case, the natural looks better. Here is the comparison between those four color profiles on my phone. I think it will be a big difference between different phones. Okay, we had the overall look of the Filmic Pro. What I like is the high bitrate and it contains more details and more natural looking. Also, we had a full sensor image than the cropping in image from the built-in camera app. What I don't like is the awkward user interface and interaction logic. What I expect the most, the lock, didn't work so well on my phone. I believe it's an individual case, it won't be all the same. Maybe it's just because I'm not good at using it, or my phone already have a optimized color profile. I don't know. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. 
Anyway, it's definitely worth to buy the app if your phone is supported, as well as the cinematographer kit. Once you purchase them and you didn't get the best result as you want, you can always ask for a refund in 48 hours. Okay, that's the video for today. Thanks for watching. If you think it's been useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Don't forget to turn on the little bell icon. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.